as we've all heard today, of course, all the incredibly amazing people who've been inspired in their own way to be able to look at how indeed they can make that difference to the world, whether it's about today or thinking about the future. Um, I guess from our perspective, when we start to, to look at uh, the incredible sort of array of resources, and of course, I'm already starting to hopefully change a little bit of that thinking in your mind, that waste, of course, is only a waste because we haven't quite been smart enough to think about yet how it might be able to come back to life. And of course, you know, you've heard about terms like circular economy. The critical word in there, of course, is economy. Unless and until you can demonstrate that whether it's about your glass or whether it's about your electronic waste, unless and until you can demonstrate that it's got value in the long term, you're never going to bring the word economy back into circular economy. So for us, we wanted to be able to look at some of the more complex, challenging materials. And of course, electronic waste, it's part of our everyday lives. So it's one of those classic sort of uh, situations where you kind of almost see the best and the worst that technology has to offer. What we mean in that way is that the best thing is, it's done amazing things for all of us on this planet. But as this video is actually showing you, there are many, many parts in the world that we see, whether it's about places like India or Africa, um, you actually see some horrific conditions where people are indeed burning away plastic so they can indeed extract valuable materials like copper and gold and so on. So what is it that we can do in Australia? We can play a role in developing solutions, technologies. So imagine if we could indeed take a lot of these types of waste resources and actually tap into that value. So when UNEP talks about billions of dollars worth of resources that are embedded in this e-waste, I think what it is upon all of us to make sure that it's not just about those who can afford the technology to create value, but it is about everyone on this planet who can tap into and we can then deliver jobs in an equitable manner, in a safe manner, in a sustainable manner. It should no longer be considered acceptable for us to see those horrific images in places where kids are burning away waste plastics so that they can just access metals and that then becomes a form of livelihood. So I think we need to be able to rethink how we're gonna shift those dynamics. Well, how do we actually do that? You know, we can't actually say, well, you know what, they should stop doing that. That's not the answer. The answer is really to be able to say, if electronics and devices are phones, and we've heard about how many, many countries have gone right past landlines and moved into uh, mobile phones, for example, if these technologies are making this planet a better place for everyone, then let's also use the end of life waste materials. And I wanted to be able to, of course, address that point. How do you actually deliver equitable jobs? How do you actually have decentralized manufacturing from waste resources? Because of course, it sounds very contradictory. Waste materials, contaminated streams, and so on and making value-added materials and products so that everybody can be part of a global supply chain. How do you actually have manufacturing businesses that can be decentralized across the world? And that's really where an example of what we're doing in our solution with micro factories is about taking waste resources. And here's an example of what you can do with waste plastics. The ability to convert them into plastic filaments that then allow manufacturing to take place in a decentralized manner through small micro factories is in a way telling us that there are ways in which micro factories can actually address the critical issue of safety, sustainability, and most importantly, how do we address that whole important question of equity? So is it possible that Australia can play a leading role in enabling us to create these technologies so that we're not only just looking at how these might be deployed in Australia, but how we can actually deploy these technologies globally in different parts of the world, where of course we know our electronic resources end up. We see all of that information on media. Why is it possible to be able to regenerate and create these value-added materials? Is because we know that these types of circuit boards, our batteries, our expensive raw materials that are used to create these types of incredibly fantastic devices that are, of course, life-changing, because it's not just about our phones and computers. It is about medicine. It's about education. It's about all of these sectors that are impacted through global connectivity. 
So the question is, can we actually tap into these types of end-of-life products in a way that it is possible for every community across the world, whether you're in a remote community in Australia or whether you're in a developing region anywhere in the world, is it really possible? And that's really the answer that we are creating through microfactories, that it should be possible to create highly valuable metal alloys or highly valuable plastic and ceramic and all of these incredibly fabulous materials that of course we know are so important in what we want to achieve. So how do we actually do that? What these types of solutions show is that it is indeed possible to take micro furnaces, micro processing units, micro factories to be able to transform them into valuable materials and alloys. So here's an example of an expensive copper based alloy that we have generated from our waste resources. So really the, the crux of how the economy is going to work on this basis is on the fundamental principle that what we are creating are extremely valuable materials. So if you look at the prices of these types of materials and products, you know that there is a potential to actually create jobs in a decentralized manner where small communities can take power in their own hands to be able to create whole new economies. So ultimately, micro factories are solutions that we can deploy not just in Australia with our partners in Australia, but potentially make it possible for everyone on this planet to have micro factories and create jobs, create safe environments for everyone to work and thrive and create ultimately an equitable place for everyone. Thank you.